Today we're going to review the SEC's National Exam Programme Examination Priorities for 2017. This presentation will also include tips for registered investment advisors regarding compliance policies and procedures and how to conduct reviews and tests to assist you in areas the SEC will be scrutinizing the most. All right, now we'll talk about the next um, uh, priority, which is recidivist representatives and their employees. And this was also noted, again, in last year's 2016 examination priorities, and it's most relevant to the SEC's initiative to protect retail investors. So the SEC did indicate they would be conducting examinations of such advisors, so be on alert and be prepared if this applies to you, if your firm or you have a supervised person that is, um, has a, some kind of um, past transgression. Um, now note that the SEC will use the information disclosed in the Form ADD Part 2 to, um, I guess, narrow down the universe of folks that would fall into this category, but they'll also consider other actions that are not required to be disclosed on Form ADD. Uh, they'll also consider other enforcement actions, and they'll also consider their own experience with the firm, either good or bad, and the controls at the firm but during past investigations or prior examinations. So first and foremost, you should review the um, risk alert, uh, the examination of supervis supervision practices at registered investment advisors. And this will help assist you in the pre preparation of an SEC exam. So in this alert, OC indicated that the exams will assess whether advisors, one, implemented policies and procedures procedures specific to the risk presented by employees with a disciplinary history, and two, will focus on the compliance culture and tone at the top of the exam advisors. So if you have a disciplinary event, make sure that you've adopted specific policies and procedures to address this, and you have adequate disclosures and a program to oversight um, such persons with prior transgressions. And now keep in mind that a firm's disciplinary, issue, disciplinary history can be important. I personally think it's a good thing that the SEC is focusing its resources on firms that have themselves or have supervised persons that have prior regulatory transgressions. Um, in the uh, examination alert, it did say that studies have shown that firms and employees with misconduct records are significantly more likely to engage in new misconduct at another firm. And the studies also show that misconduct is more concentrated in firms that have retail customers who are less sophisticated. So I do think this, um, this is a very important initiative. So, and this is also where compliance oversight is so imperative. And there are a number of activities that you can conduct, particular, particularly this is something you should do since this is an exam priority. So first, um, you should first, if I'm the CCO of a firm, I'm going to obtain a background check of all new employees. I would also um, do a FINRA broker check as well to see if any new or prospective employee had a securities license or had any um, compliance uh, matters in the past. You should also, um, as a CYA in a sense for yourself, provide employees with a disciplinary questionnaire initially and also on an annual basis. And in furtherance of that, build into your compliance policies and procedures that if there have been any changes to the disciplinary information reported initially or annually, that that be immediately, um, that the, the CCO of the firm be immediately informed. And then another best practice, in addition to um, the disciplinary questionnaire and background checks, is that if you do, if your firm does have a record of some kind of misconduct, I would create a memo to the compliance file with respect to the issue, so you're prepared when the SEC comes in, covering a number of topics. And the topics that I would cover, I would explain the issue, explain how the transgression could potentially, even if remote, affect the fiduciary duty of an advisor, and then explain in detail the heightened controls that the firm has adopted and the specific policies and procedures to prevent those um, situations and transgressions from happening again. So at the end of the day, the goal is to really demonstrate to the SEC that your compliance program now and at the current firm is stronger than at the firm at where this past transgression occurred, even if it's your own firm and if you've improved your compliance policies and procedures. Um, that, that should be your goal if you do have an employee or if your firm has um, had a past violation. 
And then a final note with respect to recidivist violations and disclosures. There have been a number of charges against recidivist violators, which does support the SEC's focus on the premise that it should focus on these advisors. advisors. And um, it does seem to me in many of the cases it's the unsophisticated it's, um, investors that are the ones being duped, which is, um, I mean, it's always a shame, but it's, it's always saddening when that's the case. Um, so I expect that this is a topic that will continue to remain high on the SEC's radar. And, you know, of course, um, in your Form ADV, you want to make sure that you're always disclosing any disciplinary events that are required to be disclosed. And if you are able to, in, as in accordance with the SEC directions, um, overcome the presum presumption that a specific violation or deficiency in your Part 2 or Form ADV is not material, make sure that you maintain very strong documentation if this is something you're not going to disclose. And so at this point, um, I will turn it over to Colleen to discuss the next examination priority. 